did you know that for just 200 pounds, you can go from this to this, leaving you with a quality and reliable setup that will last you for years. When you're starting out in content creation, photography, videography, the sheer amount of information and products that there is to learn about can definitely be overwhelming. And regardless of how awesome or terrible your camera is, the biggest thing that's gonna make the difference in your studio and make your footage pop is the lighting. However, lighting, of course, can be very tricky and expensive. So today, I'm gonna try and show you, as simply as I can, how you can make a scene like this without having to scour for hours through the internet and end up wasting a lot of money. At this point, I should say that you can run a similar setup for cheaper. But for me, this is sort of the best cheap setup and it's one that I can definitely vouch for. Camera gear is expensive and there's no shame in searching for the cheapest option available. But I'm kind of going to try and make the case for this setup because it's very reliable, it's optimized for small spaces and it's professional and portable enough for you to take across the world and get amazing footage. So what are the magical components? Firstly, this is the Godox SL60. I've gone with this light for a number of reasons. Firstly and foremost, it is durable and reliable. As you can see, mine has taken a bit of a beating over the years and yet she still works fine. It's 60 watts, so it packs a bit of a punch, but nothing crazy. The wattage on these lights refers to the power of light that it can deliver. It's very portable. However, it does make a little bit of noise, which could potentially be a problem, but for most use cases, I don't think it's gonna be too much of one. It has a relatively high CRI rating, which basically just means it can reproduce a more natural skin tone. And it has variable light control, so you can really dial in that exposure that you're after. The very cheap version that I was previously running way back in the day didn't have that ability and that did become a little bit of a problem. And of course, it's only £130, which is incredible for something which is going to provide this quality of light and last for as long as it will. The closest thing I'm aware of is the Amaran 60D, but the reason I've gone for this is because it is slightly cheaper and frankly, I've had one so I can personally vouch for it. Next up, we have the Salens Softboxes, which I think are one of the most overlooked products in the market. These things are very durable and ergonomically, they are the unsung hero of softboxes. I've gone through a number of cheaper brands which aren't even that much cheaper and frankly, the rotting system on the umbrella is just guaranteed to break. And yet I've had these and I've beaten them up pretty good over the last couple of years and there's absolutely no sign of wear and tear. Ergonomically, they protrude the Bowens mount significantly less than most of the other options in there. And realistically, if you're filming a setup in a little studio, you're probably doing it in quite a small space and it can become very, very challenging to deal with a massive softbox. And yet it's still providing double diffusion, which is two layers of netting on the inside, which is gonna make that light really soft. So you're not really making a compromise from having the smaller footprint. It amazes me that you can buy this thing for 66 pounds. Finally, this little demon of an LED light from AliExpress for just 11 pounds. I only bought this thing to compare it to my 70 pound, also cheaper version of the other products in the market and found that this thing is surprisingly bright. It has a decent battery life and actually fits this setup really well. There is actually one more thing and that's the light stand. I don't necessarily vouch for any type of brand here. I actually use a much thicker one with my setup, which I do think is worth the extra money, but this thing is definitely gonna do the job if you're on a budget. Just try and find the cheapest one you can that's not made out of plastic. It's worth mentioning that I'm running a relatively expensive camera setup with some quite affordable but fast glass, which is providing that depth of field, that background blur that you're currently seeing. It's the Sony A7S III, and it has a lot of the hallmarks of a more expensive camera, such as high dynamic range and 10-bit color recording. 
But the beauty of the lighting setup we're about to go through is that the capabilities of a camera like this become much less important when you've controlled the scene and you've molded the light to create the image that you're after. You'll often find that newer, better spec cameras really shine when they're outside of a controlled environment. I have this Sony because I shoot a lot outdoors and you can reproduce really natural images with such a quality sensor. But in a setup like this, I cannot tell the difference from all the previous cameras that I owned. So although there is a depth of field in these shots, I'll show you in a bit that because of the way this scene is mapped out, you'll still be able to get a lot of separation from the subject without necessarily having some of those features. So once you've got these products, you'll need to mount the softbox to the light. The mount on these systems is called a Bowens mount, and as you can see, there's three edges around them. These will connect together and mount firmly in place. Before you do that, you'll need to be quite firm with the softbox mechanism by pushing the little lump of metal into the back rod until it clicks in place. Once that's in, you'll need to attach the two layers of diffusion that are provided. This is pretty simple, and then mount the softbox to the Godox light and attach it to the tripod. Make sure that there's a plug nearby your setup as this light will need to be plugged in to be powered. On which note, there aren't any external battery options for this light, which is another downside. First things first, it's important to optimize the space that you have. So of course, everyone's room or wherever they're shooting is gonna be a different size. This room is quite favorably sized to do this, but we still need to be putting it right in the corner. That's gonna give us the most amount of separation from the background to us. As you can see, I'm gonna have to pull my desk forward so I can get the camera in the furthest corner of the room. It's quite common for people to just do a setup by a wall because it seems safe and there's a safe backstop, but ideally we wanna try and move away from the wall as much as possible, and there's several reasons for that. It's really important that we try and minimize the amount of spillage coming from the light, as if that light is hitting a reflective surface nearby, you'll find that white paint on a wall is a very reflective surface, and that's gonna dampen some of that three-dimensional shape that we're seeing with the lighting. Cameras don't see depth as well as we do, so we want to shape that light and give it a sense of three-dimensional space. By going all the way in this corner, here we're going to be able to create the light on the face and then we're going to be able to do something different with the background. What we're going to want to do now is kill the light. We've killed the light and we've got two options here and this is actually a significant thing to note. We can either place the light to the left or we can place the light to the right. One of these is the better option to do. Okay, so on the left hand side, we've got the light above us at about 45 degree upwards and we've got it at about 45 degrees to our side as you can see filming position and it looks decent we've got a bit of shape to the face the background is certainly a different exposure to us but there is one slight way to improve this as you'll see the shadow here isn't particularly notable and that's because this light here because this light is facing the wall what's happening is the light is hitting this wall and it's filling in a lot of what would be shadow here because we're using the fill light of the reflection and so if we were to move this light here facing me what we're going to get is a lot of that light is just going to fall into that dead space there and we're going to be able to get much more of a shadow but on this side of the face Okay, so we've moved the light to the right and now you're really beginning to see a lot of the mood and the shape coming to my face. And as you can see, as we begin to move the light from here, all that light is being focused on me, but the shadow is relatively flat. As we begin to move this away from us, now we're creating a much deeper shadow because we've got much less part of this light hitting my face. And because we've put ourselves in the opposite end of the room, now even though this light is facing more of the room, it's still not able to really bounce off. Whereas when we had the light over there, that was directly bouncing off this wall. So this is gonna, again, allow us to control that light a little bit more. And now by busting out the mini LED, we're gonna do two things. Firstly, we're gonna create a point of focus. As you can see around me, this is drawing your eyes into the middle. Additionally, we are just adding some color and some light to the background. 
And so here we are. We've got this double diffused light above us. We've got it at 40 degree angle above me and 40 degrees to the side. Having it this way is a great rule of thumb for anything you might be filming. This is very favorable light for any subject. As you can see from the shots we took at the beginning, there's a harsh light on me, which is lowered down and is clearly reproducing a much less favorable image of the same face. Also to reference here, because we have the light there, I've placed the mic here because then I will naturally have to face it. You'll notice that if I start to veer the wrong way, the light is interacting very differently with my face. And so just to show you, I'm now gonna increase the f-stop on this lens, which is gonna increase the depth of field. And you should be able to see that because of the various components we've deployed here, we're still getting a lot of separation from the rest of the scene. And we're still the main point of focus. So we're now f 7.1 and as you can see we've lost a lot of that background blur which definitely was contributing but we're still clearly the dominant force in the image and the scene looks just as good. I really hope this video has been useful and there are links in the description for these products. Everyone's room is going to be different and you're probably going to have to make some minor adjustments to get what's right for you. But hopefully there's been enough useful information in this video so you're going to know how to navigate that and hopefully make the best scene possible. As I mentioned at the beginning, you can get this set up for cheaper, but I really think you should consider spending the extra money on this setup. After all, a new camera, a new lens is going to be significantly more expensive than running something like a £100 setup to a £220 setup. And I would argue is going to make by far the biggest difference for your content. The setup I run costs about £700. I have the bigger cousin of this light, which is twice as bright and has a much heftier tripod. But like I said, when I'm filming these, it really doesn't make any difference. That extra light really just comes in handy for me as a videographer when I'm on the road or I'm filming anything to be able to give that extra light, namely for B-roll shots and potentially filming numerous people in an interview. I still use the same softbox. I own two more, which are significantly bigger than this, but I find that actually the smaller one is just a lot more easy to use. What I do use is this RGB light, which only costs seven. £70 and I must say of all the things that are potentially worthwhile upgrading here this is up there. It's got better battery life, it's slightly brighter and it's got the full spectrum of RGB with various different custom lighting modes such as this constant change in hue. In my other videos I'm mostly using a blue light at the back because it just adds another layer of contrast as that's at the opposite end of the color spectrum to my skin tone. Although it's awesome and certainly good for £11, the only real quirk I found with the mini LED is that it does take quite a while to charge. But you're going to get a solid two hours of light, which for most people is going to be okay. If you're trying to do live streaming or something like that, then you may need something that plugs into the wall. But you can also just plug this into a battery pack and it's going to stay going all day long. But guys, the difference is very, very minimal. And to have this set up for this cost is definitely going to be worth it. Like I said, I think the only real downside is the noise. I can hear it right now. I feel like it didn't used to be quite as noisy as this, but it may just be because I've got you to my other light, the SL150, which is a lot more quiet and actually has a fan off mode. There are a million and one things you can do to improve the lighting of any situation, including this scene here. But for £200, as reliable and relatively simple as this is going to be, I think it's the best option for anyone who's looking to get into content creation or is looking to upgrade their setup. And if you have any questions, please just pop a comment down below and I'll try my best to get back to you.